الحمد لله الحمد لله يبعث وأحلى الأكلة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم من الخير وبك نستعين يا فتاة سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال اهبطا منها جميعا بعدكم لبعد عضو فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن اتبع هداي فلا يضل ولا يشقى ومن أعرض أن ذكري فإن له معيشة ضنكا ونحشره يوم القيامة أعمى قال رب لما حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرا قال كذلك أتتك آيتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى وكذلك نجزي من أصرف ولم يؤمن بآيات ربي ولعذاب الآخرة أشد وأبقى أفلم يهد لهم كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون يمشون في مساكنهم إن في ذلك لآيات لأولي النهى ولولا كلمة سبقت من ربك لكان لزاما وأجل مسمى فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل تنوع الشمس وقبل غروبها ومن آلاء الليل فسبح وأطراف النهار لعلك ترضى ولا تمتن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم زهرة الحياة الدنيا لنفتنهم فيه ورزق ربك خير وأبقى واحمر أهلك بالصلاة واستمر عليها لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبة للتقوى وقالوا لولا يأتينا بآية من ربي أولم تأتهم بينة ما في السهف الأولى ولو أن أهلكناهم بعذاب من قبله لقالوا, لقالوا ربنا لولا أرسلت إلينا رسولا فنتبع آياتك من قبل, من قبل أن نذل ونقزى 
قل كل متربص فتربصوا فستعلمون من أصحاب الصراط السوي ومن اهتدى First of all, give our praise and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us. We send salat and salat. We send salat and salam on his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As you continue with the tafsir of Surah Al-Taha, and verse 1, 23, we're dealing with the story of Adam alayhi salam and Iblis, and the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made to Adam alayhi salam, the pledge that was taken, that you are allowed to eat and drink and enjoy everything of paradise except approaching one tree. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, in Jannah Allah taju'a wa la ta'ara, as long as you continue to obey my commands and do not approach that tree, then you're never going to be hungry, you're never going to be naked, you're not never going to be thirsty, you're not going to have to feel the heat. But if you allow shaitan to misguide you, if you allow the temptations of shaitan and the whispers of shaitan to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you fall for his tricks, then know that Tashko, you're going to be in distress. You're going to have to face that hunger. You're going to have to face the thirst. You're going to have to face the heat. You're going to be naked because everything you're going to have to strive for yourself. You're not going to get back anything free from Allah and what that. So all the comfort that Allah had given him in paradise, him and his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you only approach that tree, then know that all of that is going to be taken away from you. And as Allah says, Shaitan still went and he whispered, for was was a Ilaihi Shaitan, Shaitan whispered to, to him and to his wife. And we know the result of that. They both approached the tree, they ate from the tree. And then they were totally naked, searching for leaves in order to cover themselves, cover their nakedness. But Adam alayhi salam, he asked Allah, oh Allah, if, if I were to repent and I were to do good deeds, will you return me to Jannah? And the answer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to him was yes. Allah is going to grant you Jannah as long as you work hard. And then in this verse, Allah says, Both of you go down from it altogether. So, refers to two of you. So, both of you come down all together at the same time. So, according to some, as you mentioned, refers to both Adam and his wife were sent down. <clears throat> they were both sent down. And then Allah says, that some of you are going to be enemies to others. And this is where we stopped off in our last class. Some of you are going to be enemies of some. According to some, this refer to human beings, the children of Adam alayhi salam, they are going to be enemies of one another. And we saw from his own children, Cain and Abel, his own children became enemies of one another. And from there onwards, right on until the day of judgment, human beings are going to be enemies with other human beings. Even though we as human beings, we came from one father. We only have one father. We don't have two fathers. Or every single human being came from Adam alayhi salam. But yet, we see so much of hatred, so much of malice, 
so much of envy, jealousy, see so much of <clears throat> hatred towards or enmity towards each other. And they're fighting and there's wars and all these kind of things are happening. And it is all happening amongst the children of Adam. And this is what Allah says, some of you are going to be adu, enemies of others. And other, according to another opinion, when Allah says, adu, it refers to the children of Adam are going to be enemies to the children of Shaitan, of Iblis. That is the Jinnat. So man is always going to be or is always going to have that enmity towards the jinns, and the jinns are always going to have an enmity towards man. Because what Allah tells us clearly that certainly shaitan is an open enemy for you. The jinns are the children of shaitan. So shaitan uses a lot of the jinns to do his work. So, and Allah already tell you, shaitan is your open enemy. And if the jinns are the workers of shaitan, we have to hold them as our enemies as well. Even though there are some good jinns, because there are some who accepted Islam. Just as our human beings, they are jinns, so there are good jinns, they are bad jinns. And similarly, all the jinns consider us human beings as their enemies, because this is what they are being told by the shaitan. As soon as they come into the world, this is what they have been taught. They have been trained that, you know what, the reason we are like this, the reason we are, of course, it is because of Adam and that progeny of human beings. So they grow up with that type of enmity towards man. And this is why many times they trouble human beings. Sometimes they possess human beings. They do all sorts of things to human beings as well. So when Allah says, li adu, this is another interpretation that human beings are going to be enemies with shaitan, with the jinnats. And the jinnats are going to be enemies towards human beings. So Allah continues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fa imma yatiyannakum minni hudan fa man ittaba'a hudaya fa la yadillu wa la yashqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but whenever guidance comes to you from me, whenever guidance comes to you from me, and guidance will come through Allah sending messengers. So Allah had chosen now Adam alayhi salam. Before this whole incident of approaching the tree, Adam alayhi salam was only the first man. He was not the first prophet at that time because he was not a messenger at that time. But there were no need for dawah. There were no need to invite towards Islam or towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they were already in Jannah. But as he came on earth now, Allah said, to majtabahu, Allah chose him and made him into a prophet. And Allah would have sent his guidance to Adam, alayhi salam. As Allah tells us in Surah Baqarah, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّي كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Allah says, Adam salam, received words. The first thing he got from revelation, the first revelation, just as how we know of the first revelation that was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as ikra, read. Allah says, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ The first set of revelation given to Adam alayhi salam were words of tawbah, of repentance was words of repentance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him those words of repentance. Rabbana zalamna antusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. These were the words given to Adam alayhi Rabbana zalamna antusana wa Allah we have wronged ourselves. We have done injustice to our own self. This is what Allah taught them. Allah taught Adam salam, to say this. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves because look, Allah was giving them everything and they still went against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they say, well, Allah, we have wronged ourselves. And if you do not forgive us, 
وَتَرْحَمْنَا And if you do not have mercy upon us, then أَكُونَنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Then we are going to be from amongst the khasirin, from amongst the losers. So whenever guidance come to mankind from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the means of prophethood, through the means of different scriptures, different books. So for each prophet, we know Allah would have sent the, that prophet to their people. So Allah is telling us not only of this ummah, but all the ummahs from the past. Allah says, anytime Allah sends guidance to you, Anytime guidance come to you from Allah, and whoever follows the guidance. So one is guidance coming, but whoever follows the guidance, whoever says, yes, I'm going to accept the guidance. And normally guidance will only come when the people have been totally corrupted. So when there's a lot of sins, when there are a lot of idol worshiping, when there are lots of gambling, when there are lots of crimes being committed, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would normally send his Nabi, would send one of his prophets. And when Allah sent one of his prophets, now the people at that time, they're at that moment they are enjoying themselves. Because they don't have they're, they're not listening to any laws. They're just living a free life. So when the prophet came with a guidance, many of them would have torn away from the guidance. And this is why we see after every prophet came, only a few handful of people would follow him. Only a few handful of people. And now Allah is saying, if you listen to or you take my guidance when I send it to you, then you are not going to be misguided. That is, Allah is going to protect you. Allah is going to allow you to get your Jannah. Allah is not going to allow you to go down the wrong path. And Allah is not going to make you suffer. And La Yashqa refers to in the hereafter. Because Adam, alayhi salam, he wanted to go back into Jannah. So Allah says, if you follow my guidance, you'll get that Jannah. La yashfa. You're going to get your Jannah back. But if you do not accept the guidance, only then you're not going to get that Jannah. Then you're going to be shaqi. And shaqi means then you're going to be unfortunate. Then you're going to suffer. Then you're going to be thrown into the fire of Jahannam. So one human beings in Jannah, thrown out from Jannah, placed on earth, they want to go back into Jannah. Allah says, you need to work in order to get back that Jannah. And if you don't get that Jannah, you go worse. So you have the highest with this Jannah, you come down to earth. You have either to go back to Jannah or to go lower. Now. And if you disobey Allah, you do not accept Allah's guidance, then you're going to go into Jannah. You're never going to see, you, because at that time, on the day of judgment, you're not going to see this dunya as well again. So on that day, it's only Jahannam, straight down now, or you go up to Jannah. You return back to Jannah where Adam alayhi salam was. So Allah says, Fala yadilu wala yashqa. <clears throat> Allah will not allow you to suffer in the hereafter, but then that is why we need to follow the guidance. Even though sometimes the guidance might look as if it is restricting our lives from what others are doing. Many a times when you look at what you have to do and what you have to stay away from, and you look at other people's lives, they are having a, a happy life. You, you see that in that way, that they are not praying, they don't have to fast, they don't have to do nothing. They could just go out and party when they want. And as Muslims, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you follow Allah's command. Allah says you have to pray five times a day, so you make sure you pray five times a day. Allah tells you stay away from things which is haram, and you stay away from things which is haram. So while they're enjoying it, you are restricting yourself. <clears throat> and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, 
Adunia Sijn al Mu'min wa Jannat al Kafir are very, very short hadith. Adunia Sijn al Mu'min wa Jannat al Kafir. Say that the dunya is a sijin. The dunya is a prison for the believers. And it's jannah for the unbelievers. For jannah to kafir. That is what this dunya is. So it is a jannah for the unbelievers. They are free. They enjoy themselves how much they want. <clears throat> they are allowed to. To enjoy themselves because this is the only enjoyment that they're going to get. Because as long as it dies on believers, this is all that they're going to see, which is the dunya. But for the believers, this world is a sigil, a prison. And when you say a prison, it's not that it is going to suffer you, but it's that you're restricted. A prisoner is restricted. He can't say, you know, I feel like to take a walk and walk out of prison and go how we feel like. No. He has to stay there. Even if he want to go, he still has to stay there. You remain there. You're restricted. And this is what it is for believers, the dunya. We just live by the commands of Allah. Just as our prisoner will live by the rules of the prison guards. The prison guards say, time to eat. Only then they can eat. Prison guys said, time to go, time to, to lock the cells, time to take off the lights. Nobody can say nothing. That is how we do. And this is how we operate. We feel, we leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being our main authority. And we listen to him. So whatever Allah says to do, we're ready to do. If Allah says not to do, we stay away from it. So Allah says, la yadillu wa la yashba. We move on to the next verse. Verse 124. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woman a'rada and dhikri. Whoever turn away from my dhikr. Literally. Dhikr means remembrance. Whoever turned away from my reminder. And here it refers to the Quran. Whoever turns away from the Quran. Because our reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes through the Quran. It doesn't come anywhere else. The only way we get reminders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the Quran. Allah doesn't speak directly to us. Allah doesn't send any other messenger again. So the only way we get reminders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is whatever is in the Quran. So again, listen to what Allah says. Woman a'arada and dhikri, whoever turns away from my Quran. And when we say turn away from the Quran, one is like the unbelievers. They have totally turned away from the Quran. They have turned away from the Quran because they do not believe in the Quran and they deny that the Quran is the half, the Quran is the truth. So they don't live by the Quran. The Quran is nothing to them. So they have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reminder, which is the Quran. So that is one total, totally turning away from the Quran. The second is that individual who is a Muslim but still turns away from the Quran. So you could be a Muslim and still turn away from the Quran. So you have Iman. You know you have to pray Salat. You have to fast. You believe that there's no God but Allah, and you believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last and final messenger. We see many, many people out there like this. They have Iman. And you can't take away their Iman. As long as they have Iman, at least they have Iman. 
And we keep on praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them the tawfiq that they can start to do actions. So they have iman, but they don't pray no salat at all. Nothing, nothing, no salat at all. <laughs> if you ask them, are you Muslim? Yes, I'm a Muslim. They will even recite a kalima for you, some of them. And if you give them a, a little chance, they might even recite sorry, a glance for you too. <laughs> One of the most famous Surah. <clears throat> they will tell you, hey, I could read Surah in class and we'll read it for you, but they don't pray no salat. They don't fast at all. They don't they don't do nothing at nothing in accordance to Islam. They just live their lives. And some some of them are even into disobedience as well. So they are drinking, they are smoking, they are just living their life. Those have turned away from the Quran as well, even though they are Muslim. Even though we as believers, if they were to pass away, we still have to pray janaza for them because they are Muslims. And, and sometimes people ask, why you pray janaza this man? He's still Muslim? No, if he is, has never said that he's not a Muslim, he's still a Muslim, and you still have to pray janaza for him. But what he has done his whole life, even though he's a Muslim, he has torn away from the Quran. So this is the second type of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. So one is the unbelievers, and the second are those who are here in the Quran and they turn away. So Muslims who have turned away completely, and then you still have the third type. The third type. So if you notice, both we have the unbelievers turn away completely, don't believe and don't have no, no time with the Quran. The next one that I mentioned are believers. And even though they have the Iman, they have kind of turned away completely from the Quran. But then there are others who will take some of the Quran and not ready to accept some of the Quran. So they will just take some and they say, no, I, I don't want to hear about those other parts. I don't accept that. Or, so they have turned away from some of the Quran. Or uh, they saying what these are those laws are too hard or too difficult for me to act, and I'm not going to act on that. I believe in it, I believe it is the Quran, but you know what? I'm not ready for that. So they push that aside. So they have turned away from the Quran partially as well. So what Allah says, listen to what Allah says. Whoever does that, woman and dikri, whoever turns away from the Quran. But in Narahu Maisha than Duncan. Allah says, for him, he will have a confined life. Maisha than Duncan. Maisha than Duncan refers to the word Maisha than refers to life, means life. And Duncan refers to narrow, a restricted life. So many of the opinion, Ma'ishat and Duncan refers to a very hard life, a life of hardship. So on away from the Quran, and you live, you get only a hard life. And you see it. Sometimes they, have, they feel they're so free and they're enjoying it. But when you really look at their life, they were punished. And you could see it on them. But they do not even realize it. Do not even realize, you know what? If I need to get a good life, I need to start to uh, practice my deen. If you put someone who is practicing their deen, and you put someone who is on sins, they are Muslim, but they are on sins, you could see the type of life. And you will see the one with the deen is living a more happier life. So one, they are living a more free life, but it's, there's no happiness in that life. There's a lot of stress, a lot of difficulties, a lot of hardship they're going through. Sometimes it might not be outwardly, but in their family and with their jobs and everything, they're going through a rough time. And the one who is obeying Allah, he is not having a free life because he has to make sure he prays a lot. He has to make sure he puts aside time to do this. Allah says, don't do that. He's not doing it. So he's not having a free life, but a happy life. So one is you could, show a, you could choose a free life, 
and get a life of hardship, or you could choose a confined life that is a restricted life and get a happy life. When we say restricted, refers to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Ma'isha dan Duncan, one is Fala Tumaninatun. It is mentioned, one is such a life that there's no tranquility. There's no tranquility. There's no peace. There's no calmness in your life. See, so you turn away from Allah, Allah removes that calmness from your life. Allah removes that tranquility from your life. Wala in shirahali sadrihi. There's no expanding of their chest. When you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah expands your chest. Alam nashrah laka sadr. And when your chest is expanded, then things become easy for you. Your burdens become easy for you because Allah has expanded your chest. So, Ma'isha and Duncan is such that Sadrahu Dayyikun Harajan Li Dalalihi that his chest now becomes so, so constrained and he only sees difficulties in his life, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might grant him favors. So even though he might have a lot of money, even though he might have a big job, <clears throat> Allah removes that tranquility from their lives. <clears throat> and over and over you hear, sometimes when, when people get older, they will come and they will, they will tell you, you know what, I've wasted my life. My whole life, I was running along this. I was trying to do this. I was trying to do that. I was trying to get into this business, into that. And now I realize, you know what? It didn't worth it. After all of that, then they come. And it so happens many a times. So they have a few more years. And that last few years of their life, sometimes that is the only year they get that tumanina. They get that tranquility in their life. Spend your whole life running down the dunya, and because as you run down the dunya, you turn away from Allah's reminders, turn away from the Quran, Allah gives you a hard life. So you're in and out every day, you're hustling. And then when you retire and you put aside everything and you start to pray, and when they start to get that sweetness at that age, when they start to get that sweetness, sometimes in 60, 70 years old, then they start to pray. And when they taste that sweetness, they would wish, many of them would tell you, Lord, I wish I was doing this a long time. So much years have already passed. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَإِنَّ لَوْ مَعِيشَ تَنْتَقْ And if you only turn away from the Quran, Allah is going to give you a very hard life because you have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book. You have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's <clears throat> reminders. As mentioned from Ibn Abbas, he says, Kullama a'taytuhu abda min ibadi qalla wa kathur. He says, anytime Allah gives his servants, be it how small or how much, anytime Allah favors any servants, and he does not use the favors I have given to him to fear Allah, to inculcate some sort of taqwa. He says, Allah does not place any goodness in that which he has given to them. So Allah has given you a job. Allah has given you wealth. If you take that and you do not use that to develop a closeness to Allah. You do not have no sort of taqwa with regards to what Allah has given to you. You take it and you're trying to run down more instead of utilizing it and getting closer and closer to Allah. It says, There's no goodness in it. And not only there's no goodness, he says, He says, That is considered to be the 
Ma'isha dan don tan that Allah is speaking about in the Quran. That is considered to be the hard life that Allah has because you have used it instead of obeying Allah, you have used it in the disobedience of Allah. <clears throat> Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says al mu'minu fi qabrihi fi rawdatin qadara that the believer in his grave will be fi rawdatin qadara will be in green gardens similar to another hadith with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says al qabr rawdatun min riyad al jannah that the grave could be a goddess from the gardens of paradise. So here in this hadith, he's saying that the believer in his grave is going to have a green garden. And Allah is going to Allah is going to expand for him his grave the 70 times length. And then he says, And Allah will send down light in his grave, like the night of Badr, the moon of the night of Badr, the full moon. And then the Prophet says, Do you know whom this ayat was revealed about? That is, whoever turns away from the Quran is going to have a hard life. Do you know who is that? And he says, Do you know what is considered to be a hard life that Allah is speaking about? And then they said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam, Allah and his messenger knows best. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Adhanab al-kafiru fi qabrihi. He says, the punishment of the unbelievers in their grave is considered to be a hard life. So one is we have in the dunya and even when they go in the grave because if they die as an unbeliever the entire time in as we say in the, the world of Barzakh that entire period in Barzakh will be a period of adab and punishment. And that is not going to be a period of any type of favors. So whilst they are in the dunya and they have seen themselves having a hard life, yet Allah will still give them some favors. So they're still going to get some favors in the dunya. But when they go into the grave, there's no favors again. The entire stay in the grave from when they die until the day of judgment is going to be punishment upon punishment. He says, that is Maisha <clears throat> and Duncan. And then Allah says, he says, and we will raise him on the day of judgment blind. Allah will make them. So after having that hard life, Allah is going to resurrect them on the day of judgment blind. They're not going to be able to see. Aman alayhi kulla shayin illa jahannam. So that they are going to be blind from everything except jahannam. Again, they're going to be blind from everything except jahannam, which means the only thing they're going to see is jahannam. They're going to be blind, can't see anything. Only thing Allah is going to grant them the sight to see is Jahannam. And the reason they are seeing Jahannam as a form of adab for them. Because when you see something and you know that you have to go there and it is something not to your liking. You're seeing fire and to know that soon you will be thrown into that fire. That by itself, that anxiety that is going to build up, that by itself is a punishment before even tasting the punishment. So Allah tells us in Surah Naziyat, Yawma yatadhakkar al-insanu ma sa'a wa burrizat al-jahimu lima yara. Allah says, on that day, yatadhakkar al-insanu ma sa'a, that insan is going to remember all he has done. 
He's going to remember all he has done. وَبُرِّزَتْ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَيَّرَ And then Jahim, the fire of Jahannam, is going to be made apparent for them to, for them to see. So this individual, he's going to be resurrected. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامُتِ أَعْمَى He's going to be resurrected blind, but still have the power to be able to see the fire of Jahannam. And he's going to remember all the things that he has done. So all the actions that he had done, all the things that he had said, all the things that, all the evil actions, everything he's going to remember was seeing the, the, seeing the fire of Jahannam. But he is going to be blind. Allah tells us, نَحْشُرُهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِدِ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ حُمْيًا وَبُكْمًا وَسُمَّ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ Allah says, we are going to resurrect them on the day of judgment on their face. And they're going to be blind. <clears throat> their ma'wa, their place of abode is going to be the fire of Jahannam. So this individual, and we are talking about those who turn away from the Quran. And I just mentioned before the three types of people who turn away from the Quran. So one is, you're going to have a hard life. So in the dunya, Ma'ishat and Duncan is what Allah is promising. You turn away from the Quran, then you're going to live Ma'ishat and Duncan. You're going to have a life of difficulties. And next, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى You're going to be resurrected on the day of judgment. A'ma, blind. You're not going to see. But now, they are going to be worried. How it is that I used to see and I can't see again? Because their whole life in the dunya, they were able to see. They were seeing. And all of a sudden now, when they are resurrected, they are resurrected blind. So Allah tells us in the next ayat, they themselves are going to, is going to ask Allah, Rabb qala rabbi lima hasharutani a'ma wa qadakuntu basira. He will say, Paula. Rabbi lima hasharutani a'ma. My Lord, why did you raise me blind? Why did you resurrect me blind? Wa qadakuntu basira. Was I used to see. That is in the dunya. When I was in the dunya, I used to see. I was never blind. And all of a sudden, I've been resurrected and I can't use my eyes. The only thing I can see is the fire of Jahannam, nothing else. Why did you resurrect me blind? So they are going to question, they're going to ask Allah, why you resurrect me blind? And Allah tells us, Allah tells us of his response to them on the day of judgment. In verse 126. Allah says, Allah, he says, he will say, كَذَلِكَ تَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَ He will say, just as our revelations came to you and you forgot them, today you will be forgotten. So this punishment is for those who turn away. So as Allah resurrect them blind, and they are asking, why am I blind? Allah will, say, Allah will say to them, Kadanika tatka ayatuna. Our ayats came to you. You had the Quran. The Quran was there. It came to you, but Panasituha, you forgot it. You turned away from it. You do as if it wasn't important. You do as if you didn't need to follow the Quran. You didn't need to live your life as the Quran taught you to live. So you, Nasitaha, you have forgotten it. Yawma tunsa. Allah says, and like that today, you are going to be forgotten. Allah is going to push you aside. So just as how you push aside the Quran, Allah is going to push you aside. So all of this is leading to or as you can say, all of these are consequences of not following the Quran. Because Allah has sent down his different revelations from since Adam alayhi salam, he has been sending to different prophets. 
Now, this is the last and final. Allah says, if you follow it, you're going to get to your agenda. You're going to get to go back to agenda. But if you turn away, then I'm promising you that you're going to have a hard life, a life without any type of tranquility, and you're going to be resurrected blind on the day of judgment. So Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Allah tells us in another ayat, فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, today we will forget them just as how they forgot that one day they have to meet us. Again, Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ Today we will forget them. كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا Just as how they forgot that they had to meet us. Because if they knew or if they were caution of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their actions would have been different. But if they turn away, because of turning away, it shows that they did not worry about meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, on the day of judgment, they are going to be forgotten as well. Now this, this verse of the Quran is not about those who forget ayats of the Quran. You know, sometimes you memorize maybe a surah and then after some time you forget that surah. Forget a few ayats of this surah and you feel, you know what, Allah must be talking to me here as well because I have thrown away or I have forgotten what Allah has said. This ayat is only referring to those who do not follow the Quran. Not about those who have forgotten ayats of the Quran. But yet there are hadiths that speaks about forgetting ayats of the Quran. So do not feel that forgetting ayats, there's no punishment at all. <clears throat> As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Ubadah bin Samit radiallahu anhu, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ma min rajal qara al-Quran there's no man that reads and memorizes a part of the Quran, Fanasiahu, then he forgets it. Memorize a piece and then he forgets it. Except that when he comes on the day of judgment and he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of him, <clears throat> because of him forgetting Allah's words. He's going to be adzam. Adzam refers to he's going to be one-sided. He's going to have signs of certain type of adab on him because of him forgetting ayat of the Quran. We know of the hadith when the Prophet ﷺ was went to the Mi'raj and he saw someone's head is being crushed. And then as the rock move away, head would come back and then head would crush again. The rock would fall on it and crush it again. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asks, who is this individual that his head is being crushed like that? And he was told that these are those who memorize and forgot the Quran. You memorize and then you forget. And the reason why there are punishment for forgetting, even though all of us, we forget as you get older, your brain, sometimes, as you say, you get rusty. <clears throat> but if you continue to read, then you wouldn't really forget it. So as long as you're reading and you're reading and you're reading, you won't forget. But when you stop reading, then is, then is when you're going to forget it. So for example, if you memorize a surah, I'm going to give you an easy surah, surah wa duha. You memorize that, you say you want to memorize that surah, and you go, you memorize surah to duha, wa duha. And after you memorize it, for two months straight, you don't read it. When it's time to pray, you only read it, kulu Allah wa had and kulu a'udhu bra bin nas. Even though you memorize wa duha, you, you just push that aside because that's taking too long to read, but it's salat. 
So you only read any short ones. After two to three months, you can remember Surah Wa Doha because you didn't, you didn't keep on reading it. You need to read it. And this is why um, uh, a certain amount of adab was placed on people who forget because of their own negligence. Because if you are not neglectful and you are reading it over and over, definitely you are going to remember it. You're not going to forget it. So Allah says, And that day they, they are going to be forgotten. We move on out to verse 127. Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي مَنْ أَصْرَفَ وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ وَلَا عَذَابَ الْآخِرَةُ أَشَدُّ وَأَبْقَى Allah says, thus we recompense him who transgresses and does not believe in the revelations of his Lord. The punishment of the hereafter is more severe and more lasting. So, Allah says, we, this is how Allah recompenses. That is, if you do good, you're going to get a good life. You're going to get a good life here. You're going to get a good life in the grave. And you're going to get the best in Jannah. That is, that is how Allah recompenses. But if you are asrafa, that is trans, a transgressor, and you do not obey Allah, then Allah's recompense is you're going to have a hard life here. You're going to have an even worse life in the grave. And you don't want to even think about on the day of judgment. So Allah says, this is how he recompenses. And Allah leaves it up to us to choose. Allah does not force us. And this is why there is what we call reckoning on the day of judgment. Because... Allah has given us a free choice that we can choose. But Allah let us know. Allah says, you should know. Whatever you're experiencing right now in the dunya is nothing. Any type of adab you think about that Allah is giving you is nothing compared to what Allah has in the hereafter. So if you are disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is putting you through some hard times and you still, instead of turning back to Allah, you still hold on to your disobedience and you keep on in that same life of hardship. Allah says, you should know that the akhirah, the adab in the akhirah is a shab. It's even more severe than what you could even think about here. It is more severe. There's no other, no type of punishment in this dunya that could be even equal to the least punishments in the fire of Jahannam. Even the greatest type of adab you could think about in the dunya cannot be compared to the least amount of punishment Allah has in store in the fire of Jahannam. So if you're working for Jahannam, you should think about that. This is what Allah is letting us know. Allah is, Allah is just saying, Allah says, we have things prepared for those who don't want to believe. If you want to believe, believe. If you don't want to believe, don't believe. But you should know the adab of the akhirah is ashat and not only ashat. Wa abqa. It is everlasting. It is everlasting. Punishment in this life is not everlasting. You feel a little pain now. And after a few days, it heals. Pain goes away. But the pain that you're going to get in the fire of Jahannam is not going to go away at all. It is going to be there every single second. Think about that. The same pain that you feel, and many, many times we feel pain. Think about that first instant that you feel that pain. That is when it, it, it hits you the hardest. And think about that, keep on all the time, without ever any type of release. If you have ever gotten a little born before, Hans has ever born a little bit. 
When you're talking about your whole skin and things coming out, that's a little thing. Imagine having your limbs being born and not stopping. There are no eyes and no medicine to put on it. Just born and I'm born. And so Allah says, you make a choice. He's not going to make a choice for you because he has given all of us a free choice. We can choose what we want, how we want to live. Allah is not forcing you to live anyway. Allah has given you a free choice. Now it is upon you to choose what you want. If you want Allah, Allah says, I have good jaza, good recompense for you. But if you choose disbelief and if you choose disobedience, then you should know if you're going along that line, you should know that what has been prepared in the akhirah for those who disbelieve is shat wa abqa. That is, is more severe, the adab is more severe, and it is everlasting. So with this we end verse 127. So inshallah, next week we're going to continue with verse 128 inshallah. So we end tonight with that. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astagfiruka wa natubi ilayk. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسكون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله